You're watching Channel 98 NBISD TV production. Hey, welcome to episode 5 of That Geometry Show. As always, I'm your host, Kevin Corpy. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the relationship among parallel lines, transversals, and angles. Now, I know what you're thinking. Parallel lines, transversals, and angles? All in one show? It's like a dream come true. <laughs> well, you've come to the right place, because we're going to do that today. So just grab a pencil, log on to the district website, and download the sheets, and let's get on to making your dreams a reality. All right. Today's lesson is going to correspond with your Glencoe Geometry textbook, chapter 3.1 and 3.2. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to, number one, solve problems by drawing diagrams. Number two, identify relationships between two lines. Number three, name angles formed by a pair of lines and a transversal. And number four, you should be able to use the properties of parallel lines to determine angle measures. Now, there are four types of lines that we need to know about for this lesson. So here's some definitions. Number one, intersecting lines. That's the first one. Intersecting lines basically are two lines that cross and they have one point in common. For example, there's two lines, they intersect. This is the single point that they have in common right there. Another type of lines that we're going to be looking at are called skew. That's a fun word to say, skew lines. These are lines that do not intersect and they're also on different planes. A good example of that would be kind of like a highway and the highway overpass. They're going in different directions, and they're on different planes. They never intersect. Uh, the other type of lines that are going to be really important today are parallel lines. Parallel lines are coplanar lines. That means they're on the same plane, and they do not intersect. Now, we use a special symbol to denote that. It's, it's basically a set of parallel lines, vertical lines that are parallel to denote the lines, such as this. We say line AB is parallel to line CD. So that might look like this. If I draw the line AB, remember it extends indefinitely in both directions, and I have a line CD, they'll be parallel if they have the same slope. So these two lines right here, although I didn't draw them quite accurately enough, would be parallel if, as they extended into infinity in both directions, they never intersected. Okay, those are parallel lines. Another type of line is a special line called a transversal. And transversal liter literally means to cross. Okay, a transversal is a single line that intersects two or more coplanar lines, lines on the same plane, each at a different point. So if I have one line and another line, a transversal would be a line that comes right across them and intersects each one at a different point. Okay? Now, a transversal is a very useful line in geometry. They tell us a great deal about angles. Uh, let's take a look at some angles formed by transversals and some coplanar lines. All right, in the diagram over here to the right, we have line L, this one here. That one's called the transversal. And notice it intersects three lines. It intersects lines M, N, and P at three different points. Now, when that happens, we form 12 distinct angles, and they're numbered here. These angles have special names in relation to the other angles. Now, whenever we have a transversal intersecting more than two lines at a time, it's convenient, or it's especially important, actually, to look at two lines at a time, two of the non-transversal lines. So I'm going to look at M and N here. If I'm looking at angle M and N, then we can look at something called exterior angles. Now, exterior angles are going to be the angles that are on the outside of the two lines. Okay, so in this case, angle 1 and angle 12 are outside these two lines, so they're exterior, and also angle 4 and angle 9. So the exterior angles would be angle 1, angle 12, angle 4, and angle 9. Now, the interior angles are going to be the angles that are between the two lines, on the inside. That is going to be angle 2, angle 11, angle 3, and angle 10. Angle 2, angle 11, angle 3, and angle 10. They're on the inside. Now, if I looked at the other lines, line N and P, then I can get the same type of angles. If I was looking at N and line P down here, the transversal is still L. The interior angles would be 4, 
9, 5, and 8. So we'd have to specify which two lines we're looking at. Now, those are the basic angles. We now have special types of each of those two types, exterior and interior. We have something called consecutive interior angles. Consecutive means right in a row. So let's go back to line M and line N. The interior angles, remember, are 2, 11, 3, and 10. They're on the inside. Consecutive basically means they're in a row. So this would be angle 2 and angle 3. They're on the same side of the transversal. Angle 2 and angle 3 are consecutive. And we also have then on the other side of the transversal, angle 11 and angle 10. They're on the inside and they're in a row. So these are actually pairs of angles. So angle 10 and angle 11 are a consecutive interior angle pair. Now we also have something called alternate exterior angles. Now alternate angles itself can be a classification. Alternate angles are basically on opposite sides of the transversal. So alternate means opposite sides. Exterior means outside the two lines. Let's see if we can find those. I'm again talking about lines M and N. Exterior is going to be 1 and 12 or 4 and 9. Alternate means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle 1 and angle 9, they form an alternate exterior angle pair. And similarly, angle 4 and angle 12, they're both outside on opposite sides of the transversal. So they also form an exterior alternative angle pair, angle 4 and angle 12. Then we have uh, alternate interior angles, opposite side of the transversal on the inside between our two lines. So that would be angle 11, and down here, angle 3. We also have angle 2, and alternate of it is 10. So that would be, again, angle 11, angle 3, those form a pair, and angle 2 and angle 10 form a pair. The last one we're going to look at is something called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles, they can be interior or exterior, but corresponding means they're basically in the same relative location. So if I look again at line M and line N, angle 1 here is kind of in the same location as angle 3 is with relation to the two lines in the transversal. So angles 1 and angle 3 are corresponding angles. They form a pair. Um, I could look at interior angles. I can look at this angle 11 and this angle 9. They're in the same relative position, so they're corresponding angles, and they form a pair as well. And there are others on here, but I think you kind of get the idea. Now, notice how important that the diagram is right here in helping us see, physically see the relationships. The names of the angles also are pretty descriptive in, in terms of where the angles are located. So let's go ahead and review here. The word interior means between the two lines. And I'm going to refer to the two lines that are not the transversal as the lines. So between the lines in here, is the interior. Exterior means outside the two lines. So that's out here, okay, beyond them. Alternate relates to the transversal. Two angles are alternate if they're on alternating sides of this, the transversal. Now notice that the transversal is a line that the two lines have uh, in common. The two lines both are intersected by the transversal. So on either side of that transversal is alternate sides. Okay, now we're going to get to the good stuff here. When angles are formed by parallel lines, remember two lines that don't intersect, that are on the same plane. And we actually note that on the graph by drawing these little arrows here. You might have wondered what those were. If we draw two lines with little arrows on them, that means they're parallel. They're never going to intersect. Well, if that happens, we still get some interesting angles, and they have the same names, but they have some very, very interesting relationships. So now we're going to look at some very important postulates. Some VIPs. Here we go. The first one is that alternate interior angles are congruent. And again, this is just for parallel lines cut by a transversal. And we know that they're parallel because these two little arrows on the line. We basically have line M and line N and a transversal here creating eight angles. So the alternate interior angles are going to be congruent. Well, what are those going to look like? Interior, that's going to be three and 6. So angle 3 and angle 6 are congruent, which means they have the exact same measure. Uh, what are some others? Well, we've got angle 4 and angle 5. They're congruent, so they have the exact same measure. I'm just going to give one example up here. Angle 3 is congruent to angle 6 because they're alternate interior angles. And that means, of course, that the measure of angle 3 
equals the measure of angle 6. All right, what else do we know? Another VIP. Alternate exterior angles are also congruent. Well, exterior means outside, out in here somewhere, on alternate sides, right here. So we've got 2 and 7. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, and they're both exterior. So 2 and 7 are congruent, and we also have angle 1 and angle 8. They are also congruent. And again, if two angles are congruent, we'll use the arc notation or a double arc if it's, if it's a different one in the same diagram. So these are congruent angles, so they have the same measure. So I'll say angle 2 is congruent to angle 7. Another VIP, corresponding angles are congruent. Well, remember what corresponding angles were. Angle 1 here is in the same relative position to, the tra uh, to, to angle 6 here, to the transversal. So they're in the same location, so angle 1 and angle 6 are corresponding angles, and they're also congruent. So I'll go ahead and say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 6. What are some other corresponding angles? Angle 8 is in the same relative position as angle 3. So angle 8 would be congruent to angle 3. Corresponding angles are congruent. Now we also know that vertical angles are congruent. And I put of course here because that's something that's always going to be true for intersecting lines, whether or not they're parallel or not. Remember what vertical angles are from an earlier lesson. Vertical angles are formed by any two intersecting lines, and they're the ones that are across from each other. So in this case, angle 2 and angle 4, angle 5 and 7, angle 6 and 8, and 1 and 3. Those are all vertical angles, and they are congruent to each other. So again, I'll just list one here. Angle 5 is congruent to angle 7. Again, that's always true. Number 5, when we have two parallel lines, we also know then that consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Supplementary means they add up to 180 degrees. Well, let's find consecutive interior angles. That would be like angle 4 and angle 6. They are supplementary. So angle 4 and angle 6 are supplementary, which means, remember, that the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 6 has to add up to 180 degrees. And that's not real obvious from just looking at it, but it is true. The next one might explain why it's true. We also know then that adjacent angles are supplementary. When two lines are parallel, the adjacent angles are supplementary. What are some adjacent angles? Well, angle 1 is adjacent to angle 4. Angle 1 is also adjacent to angle 2. And because these are straight lines, each of these angles here, these adjacent angles, form a linear pair. Remember that term? And linear pairs, by definition, add up to 180. So we know then that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 4 has to equal 180. Well, remember, the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 6 also had to add up to 180. Well, we know that because, remember, angle 1 and angle 6, they're the same size because they're corresponding angles. So now number 5 should make a little more sense. Okay? Now, I know that's a lot to remember. But drawing an accurate picture with labels and knowing the names of the angle relationships is, is critical. And it's very important to clarify or to clearly, clearly identify relationships, especially when there's more than one set of lines and more than one transversal. Here's an example of that. Look at this diagram over here. We have basically three lines, and it appears that we have two lines intersecting them. So there's a lot of intersection going on there. Now, here's, the, here's the, uh, the problem. If angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, which of the lines must be parallel? Well, let's identify angle 1. Angle 1 is right here, and angle 2 is right here. Now, we have to figure out which lines we want to talk about. So we need to get three lines involved, two of them being the lines and one of them being the transversal. So look at angle 1. It's formed by this line, line EB, and this line, line AC. So that one, by its nature, gets two lines involved. And look at angle 2. It's formed by lines DB and also line EB. So just by tracing it out that way, you can see we have these two lines here. And this, then, the other one going in the opposite direction, must be the transversal. Well, let's turn the paper sideways, then, since that's how we're used to seeing it. Now we have two lines, and they're cut by a transversal. And we know that these are 
equal. They're congruent. Their measures are equal. Well, what are these? These are both outside the line, so they're exterior angles, and they're also on opposite sides of the transversal. So these must be alternate exterior angles. And so if we have alternate exterior angles being congruent by the postulate, we know that these lines right here have to be parallel. So let's go ahead and state that. Line AC, and remember a line has a double-headed arrow above it, must be parallel, and there's that symbol we use, to line DF. Okay, So drawing the picture and trying to see which lines are involved when there's more than uh, two and one transversal is very, very important. All right, we're going to take a break now for some public service announcements, but don't go away because I guarantee the best is yet to come, and you won't want to miss it. Some of my friends smoke weed and I don't. It's whatever. I drive the car so they won't have to get behind the wheel. I pick where we eat so they won't have to worry about choosing a place. I tell them when we heading out to the party so they won't have to worry about being on top of time or anything like that. And at the party, I'm the one talking to all the ladies. And my boys just sit there till it's time to go. And I'm like, hey, get back in the car, man. But basically, they don't have to worry about living life. I live it for them until I go to college. Then y'all somebody else's problem. But until then, it's whatever. He'll be a senator with integrity. He has my family's future in mind. He cares about young people. He's a hard worker. He's focused. Effective. I believe in old relish packing. We need a condiment with values. He'll represent us well in Washington. And he is so good looking. Old relish packet and I were trapped 50 miles behind enemy lines. He saved my life. This message paid for by citizens for old relish packet. If you're not voting, then who are you electing? Oh, good, you're still here. Great, let's get back to the math then. All righty, here's another example. Angle 8 and angle 13 are what type of angles? Well, again, we have lots of intersection points here, so let's identify. Angle 8 is this one right here. Angle 13 is this one right here. Again, let's see which lines get involved in forming the angles. We have this line and this line forming angle 8. Now, we also have angle 13, which is formed by this same line, so that has to be the transversal, and this line here. So now we've clearly identified which of the three lines we're interested in. Now, let's turn it sideways again. It's easier to see it. We're on the interior now of our two lines. We're also on opposite sides of this transversal. So these are alternate interior angles. All right, since now we know that these are alternate interior angles, let's go to the answer choices. That is going to be which choice? Choice C, okay? So we circle choice C. Now notice also that we're tempted to say that these two lines are parallel just because they look parallel. But remember, we can't assume anything from a diagram. Because there's no arrow written on either of these two lines, we can't assume they're parallel. We also can't assume they're parallel because there's no information about the actual size of the angles given. If we knew that angle 8 and angle 13 um, were the same measure and that these lines were parallel, then that'd be different. Okay, but we can't assume anything just from the diagram. Even though they look parallel, they might not be parallel. Okay, um, let's move on to a more interesting example now. And this one's going to involve some algebra, good old algebra. Now, notice the diagram over here. Again, we have basically two sets of parallel lines, and they're intersecting each other at four different points. Here's what the question is going to have us do. We're supposed to find the values of the variables if the measure of angle 1 is 16x minus 8, the measure of angle 2 is 4 times the quantity y plus 8, and the measure of angle 3 is 14x plus 2. We need to find what x and y are. Well, my gosh, that's a lot of information. Don't be afraid to mark up your diagram. Let's go ahead and do that. Angle 1 here is 16x minus 8. Angle 2, the measure, is going to be um, 4 times the quantity y plus 8, and angle 3 down here is going to be 14x plus 2. Now we need to have a plan of attack. I'm looking over here at the x's, and I'm thinking I'm going to try and solve the x's first. So what do we do? We need to set up an algebraic equation. Well, we need to be able to compare the angles to do that. Notice that this line here forms a transversal for these two parallel lines. And so angles 1 and angles 3 are corresponding angles. And we know that corresponding angles are congruent. So we can set their measures equal to each other. So that's what I did right here. The measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle 3. So now setting their algebraic or variable expressions equal to each other, we can solve. 
So subtracting 14x, we get 2x minus 8 equals 2. Adding 8 to both sides, we get 2x equals 10, and we get x equals 5. Now, it's a good idea to check. Let's check our answers. If I plug it in there, the measure of angle 1 is going to be 16 times x, which we found to be 5, minus 8. Well, 16 minus 5 is what? It's 80 minus 8, which gives us an angle measure of 72, 72 degrees. So the other angle better be 72 or we're in trouble. Let's try it. The measure of angle 3 is going to be 14 times x, which is 5, plus 2. Well, 14 uh, times 5 is going to be 70, plus 2 is, hey, looky there, 72. Getting confidence now. All right, so now we're going to have to find the other, ang the other uh, variable, which is y. So we'll do that on a separate sheet here with a new diagram. Now, let's see. The measure of angle 2 is here. I need to get it involved somehow. So I'm going to use this line and this line. And now I have to decide which of the other two lines and which two angles I can use. So let's see. Um, is there a way to get 3 involved by using one of the lines I already highlighted? Well, no. I'd have to draw two new ones. But angle 1 is formed by line MN. So I'm going to use it and then this line here that also forms it. So basically, here's my two parallel lines. And here's my transversal. So again, turning it sideways, I can see that they're outside my two lines, and they're on alternate sides. So these are alternate exterior angles, which we know to be equal. So I can set their measures equal to each other. The measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. Now plugging in their variable expressions, 16x minus 8 equals 4 times y plus 8. And we know that x was 5 from our previous calculation. So that gives us an angle of 72. And distributing the 4 over here, 4y plus 32. Subtracting 32 from both sides, we get 40 equals 4y. Dividing by 4 gives us y equals 10. And again, just to check, we know that y is 10, and so we can plug it into the measure of angle 2, which is 4 times y plus 8. And so that's 4 times 10 plus 8, which is 4 times 18, which is going to be 72 degrees. Hey, look at there. So it turned out that... Uh, Angle 1 was congruent to angle 2, which happened to also be congruent to angle 3. They were all congruent to each other. They all measured 72 degrees. One more algebraic example here. Determine the values of x, y, and z. Okay, well, this is three parallel lines cut by a transversal. This is 126 degrees. Um, that would make these right here a linear pair. So 126 plus this angle measure have to add up to 180. So I'll find z first. I know that 126 degrees plus 6z plus 6 has to add up to 180 degrees. And now I can just solve this algebraically. 126 plus 6 is 132 degrees plus the 6z. That's 180. And subtracting 132, I get 6z equals 180 minus 132 which is 48. And now I divide both sides by 6, and I get z equals 48 divided by 6, which is 8. So z is 8. Okay, moving along now. Let's see. It's nice to try and get my given known quantity involved for each of the variables if I can. Can I get it involved for this one right here? That's what equals 5y minus 4. Well, 126 and this angle here, since these are parallel, are going to be corresponding angles. And remember, corresponding angles are also congruent. So again, to find y, I can set these two equal to each other. 126 is equal to the expression for the angle measurement, 5y minus 4. They're corresponding angles. They're congruent. So now I can solve this algebraically. Add 4 to both sides. I get 130 equals 5y. And dividing both sides by 5, I get y equals 130 divided by 5, which is 26 degrees. And then finally, see how we can get x involved. Now, don't be uh, confused by three parallel lines. We're free to choose any two we want at any given time. If I look at this 126 with this parallel line, and just kind of not concentrate on the middle line right now, but look at the bottom line, these two are parallel. So 126 is outside, and x is outside, and they're on alternate sides. So these are alternate exterior angles when I'm looking at these two parallel lines. And what do we know about them? They also have to be equal. So here's the easiest algebra problem of the day. Setting the two measures equal to each other, 
126 degrees equals this variable expression x. And all we have to do now is solve for x. Voila, it's done. There you go. Okay, pretty easy. Well, now it's time for the part of the program that we call the say what? And this is the extension of the day. This is going to be an example that is going to allow us to really mark up our diagram, to add something that is not there currently, but something that's going to help us solve the problem. And it's okay to mark up our diagrams if it's going to help us solve the problem. Okay? A problem that's worthy of attack is going to prove its worth by attacking back. And this one will attack back. Let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to introduce something called an auxiliary line. Here's what the question is asking. We want to find out what the measure of angle ABC is in this diagram. Okay, well measure of angle ABC, that's this angle right here. Remember we always name the angle with the three points. Well, all I really know about angle measures is that this angle here is 75 and this angle here is 45. I also know that line DG is parallel to line EH. So how's that going to help me? Well, Here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw a parallel line right through point B. And that line is going to be parallel to these others. And what can we name it? We need to give it some, a name here. Let's call it P, and I'll put another point over here and call it Q. We haven't used those yet. So that DG, PQ, and EH, those three lines are now parallel. Well, now we can try and figure this out. I've got this parallel line and this parallel line cut by this transversal. So angle 75, which is basically DFB, and this angle here, angle ABQ, are alternate interior angles, so they are congruent. So the measure of angle DFB is equal to the measure of angle FBQ. And now I just plug in. This is 75. And that's the one I want, measure of angle F, ooh, angle, F, B, Q. All right, so that's going to give me this right here, which is a portion of what I want. I'm looking for this right here. So now let's concentrate on this horizontal line and this horizontal line. And look at this. This is 45 degrees. That's angle E, J, B. And now I can compare that because these are parallel to angle Q, B, J. They are also alternate interior angles. So the measure of angle EJB has to equal the measure of the angle that I'm wanting, QBJ. And now just plugging in, this is 45 degrees, and that's what I want right there. Now that I know this angle by the angle addition postulate, remember that one? We can combine the two together. So that says the measure of angle ABC, what we're looking for, it's just the sum of the other two angles. The sum of measure uh, angle FBQ plus the measure of angle QBJ. And I just found those out. So that's going to be 75 degrees plus 45 degrees, which is going to be 120 degrees. So there you go. The line that wasn't there to begin with, we drew it in there. And it's going to help us find the information we want. So don't be intimidated by a diagram. It's yours. Draw it, mark it up, put whatever you need to help yourself be successful. Nothing to it. Well, that concludes another fantastic episode of That Geometry Show. Thanks for sharing your time with me today, and I hope you'll join me again next week at the same time in the same place. Until then, I'm Kevin Corpy, and I'll catch you on the flip side. Watching a Channel 98 NBISD TV production.